Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, welcome to the next series of Learn Grasshopper Live. Uh, today, uh, my guest will be Stein. Hi, Stein. Can you can you hear me? Hello, loud and clear, Chris. Yeah, good. We have already fifty people uh, already waiting. Uh, okay. Just uh, if someone is already first people here, just let us know if he can hear me and Stein uh, clear. Uh, so we will shortly uh, begin. So we will start exactly with the presentation, automate the boring and engineer the awesome. I really, I really a uh, fan of your motto. Like it's yeah, not it's maybe your motto, Stein, but it's motto that you are using at Victor, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I... also, also personally, it, uh, it, it, I, I can very, very well engage with this uh, motto. So I think we <laughs> we came up with this all the way at the beginning already so like uh, six years ago so but still we are very happy with this uh, motto so that's uh, that's super nice no i think it's really in point and if someone is like engineer and just seeing automate the boring and engineer the awesome it's like okay it's about it's about yeah. me yeah uh, okay yeah. we have some first uh, guests roman audio image checked uh, we have francesco uh, hi tomas uh, we have victor with us hello chris and stein <laughs> Someone yeah, called, uh, called Victor, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have uh, Michael together. We'll start in four minutes. So exactly at 2 uh, p.m. Central European summer time. Uh, that's good to see you, Stein, again. Uh, we just seen personally one week ago uh, yeah. in, the in the better environment that we have right now, a lot better yeah, weather. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Where are you calling from? Uh, right now from uh, from rotterdam so in the netherlands um, yeah. yeah and it's quite a gray autumn day here in rotterdam so indeed in barcelona the weather was a lot uh, a lot better yeah yeah so yeah for those uh, last year last week was the rhino world meeting uh what was gathering uh people interested in what's new in the rhino 8 which is coming and yeah i had a pleasure to meet you and yeah and talked and talked about this coming uh webinar which will start uh soon and actually it was fun when we start first uh planning this webinar and we talked uh like yeah uh, stain it would be great to have a, a meeting one week before this webinar yeah. to get agenda clear and we look on our calendar it's like uh i'm uh, yeah i'm away i'm on a trip and it's like okay where are you going barcelona oh i'm i'm going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so let's uh let's take this uh let's take this uh meeting uh so yeah get to yeah it, the meeting was great i don't know what was your yeah. uh what, what what was your feeling about this rhino world uh, meeting yeah i really enjoyed it so it was the first time that uh, i was there and uh, what you could really notice is that um, yeah, the community is super active and positive. And um, so that was also very inspiring for us to see that as a software product, you can have that many really fans of your product and uh, people being super enthusiastic. So I think, um, yeah, really enjoyed it uh, a lot. And also to see uh, what will be new in the new Rhino and also uh, David Rutte showed uh, showed something about uh, Grasshopper 2. So that was also uh, very cool to see. So yeah, um, yeah exciting times. How did you uh, like it? Yeah, I really love it. I really love it. Uh, yeah, I'm really fun about uh, David, uh, who is the, like, he created, developed the whole Grasshopper. Now he forgot everything about Grasshopper 1. He's into <laughs> for two, three years into Grasshopper 2. And I also met uh, Raja. Uh, she's also working in McNeil, and I read all her books about how to learn Grasshopper. So yeah, it was cool, uh, cool event, and actually cool to see also Victor there because before I thought that you are only in the Python environment, more coding, but I'm seeing yeah. that you are more into into visual programming. And yeah, some a question to our already lots of people here. Uh, just write like in the comment and. Um, I see that people from the YouTube, maybe someone from LinkedIn as well. Just write if you're a Grasshopper, Dynamo, or Python user, or maybe C Sharp. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you are staying, you're mostly like Python fun, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, indeed. <laughs> You're a Python, indeed. Python team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm in team Python, but also actually uh, I have been, uh, especially lately since we do more with Cross, we're also playing around with Cross a bit more. And I also really like that. I think it's also super, uh, super useful. So I think, yeah, let's say different, you can use different uh, languages, I think, in different situations and uh, all have their strong points. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, we have some uh, comments. Uh, Santiago, hi, uh, Santiago. What are those books uh, he mentioned about Grasshopper? Uh, yeah, uh, so there are actually three books that I can really recommend from Raja Isa. Uh, first one is Essential Algorithm and Data Structures. Uh, this one is are available for free on Food for Rhino. Uh, the second one, and maybe the first to start with, it's uh, Essential Mathematics for Computational Design, a uh, cool book. And the last one is Essential Guide to C-Sharp Scripting. So these uh, free books uh, that you can download for, for free, Santiago. Uh, let me see. Uh, OK, so we have it right here. So we have Python users. We have Grasshopper and Python. And here we have a Python. OK, so there is a strong Python uh, team. So your, your team. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm personally a grasshopper a grasshopper team. Um, yeah. Uh, but okay. Uh, yeah. Hmm? yeah. But I also see that you are using more and more Python as well, right, uh, Chris? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going into this direction as well. Yeah. More Python and C sharp. I I saw some limitation in grasshopper. So now um, uh, I was really like, no, like text before to me, it's like a wall of the text. It's like no, no go. Uh, yeah. But right now I'm really more and more convinced, uh, convinced uh, to that one. Uh, okay. Uh, so we are starting uh, soon. Just, yeah, if you are watching uh, us on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, just uh, give a like uh, or share this uh, event. Uh, it will really help me and Stian from uh, Stein, sorry, from uh, Victor, uh, to just spread this cool webinar because it will be lots of practical examples. So if you will go, leave a like, I will, I will really appreciate, and you can help us. Okay, uh, yeah, we can actually start. We have already two, so yeah, let's start. Uh, we have lots of people already, uh, so it will be about forty minute uh, session. Uh, at the end, we will have Q and A session as, uh, as always. But of course, it will, if you will have any question uh, in the meantime, so just let us know on the LinkedIn on uh, YouTube. Uh, recordings will be available to watch afterwards, uh, and it will be together sent with the presentation, but only for registered users. So we are going to create a. Uh, document from this uh, webinar and will be sent for everyone who registered. So if you got an uh, email today with the link to this event, so actually it means that you are, as always, I really uh, encourage you uh, to write your question. So we will try to answer all of your question, that what we can, uh, of course, uh, but we have a really great expert uh, here, so use this uh, opportunity. Uh, some uh, benefits about uh, joining this webinar. So first, we will discover the power of creating uh, engineering apps using Victor. I already saw in Barcelona these uh, examples, and I'm really looking forward, especially to the last one. Uh, like, uh, always cool to see the world's biggest project. So this will be uh, cool. Uh, we'll see also how to import uh, use tools like Grasshopper and Dynamo. Can we connect them uh, with Victor? And it will be a cool example about Ladybug and Dynamo about the parking lot, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Is it correct? Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So, everything here is about practical application creating engineering uh, apps. Uh, so, today uh, I would like to welcome uh, Stein Janssen, Chief Product Officer at uh, Victor. Welcome. Thank you, Chris. Really nice to be here. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad that uh, you accepted the invitation and we met in a Rhino World uh, meeting. So now we can share a little bit more about your work, what you are doing with the old platform. Because yeah. 
like my invitation, it was also, I see the potential in the web application. I see there is more and more platform. Uh, I just wrote on LinkedIn yesterday that you don't have to be web developer to build uh, amazing uh, web, uh, web uh, websites. You don't yeah. have to be graphic designer to make a graphics because we have more and more platforms that can yeah, like Canva, for example, if you are a graphic designer, yeah. you can just use some graphics with really easy user interface. And the same you made with mm, uh, engineering application. So it would be cool, uh, cool, to, cool to see. Uh, so yeah, I, I will, for those who don't know me, just one word about me. Uh, my name is Krzysztof Wojslaw. Uh, People call me Chris. I'm a founder of LearnGhostHopper.com, a platform where, where I try to uh, transform engineering work into fun with programming. We are starting with Grasshopper as a visual programming, but we are more keen into, uh, into text-based programming, which is for, uh, for sure Python. And I'm also academic lecturer at the Norwegian University and academic lecturer in a Ziggurat Global Institute. So that was a intro short introduction. So let's go to your presentation. So now we can show what is the Victor and how you can automate the boring and engineer the awesome with Python and maybe not just Python, right? Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's, a good, uh, that's a good note. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Chris. So uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for being here. Um, yeah. I think it's a really nice opportunity to be able to uh, uh, to tell you about uh, what we are doing with uh, with uh, Victor. Um, yeah, so I will just uh, dive in um, because I have quite a lot of things uh, to show uh, in quite some time. Um, yeah, so first of all, yeah, we already discussed it briefly. So this is our slogan: "Automate the boring, engineer the awesome." Um, and what really our mission is. Uh, as a company is that we want to unlock the world's engineering potential and maybe to tell you a little bit about the background also of myself uh, so actually i studied uh, aerospace engineering in uh, in delft so i'm actually uh, really an, an engineer as a background um, and uh, then after my studies i uh, started uh, started working and actually i was quite let's say surprised uh, how, uh, how you need to learn all these new technologies in university and then you start to work and then um, yeah I was actually quite surprised how things went and that there was still quite a lot of repetitive and uh, yeah manual work uh, and that's uh, and I knew some programming also from uh, from university and then we were basically a group of young engineers um, yeah which saw an opportunity there but also really at the mission uh, to see okay how can we how can we improve this so um, you, so you so you knew some programming from before yeah yeah so in university i learned uh well it started with uh, some java uh and matlab uh -huh. and python at the end um yeah so that was that was where it uh, where it started and where i also got really enthusiastic about uh, the combination mm -hmm. um, yeah of of let's say engineering with uh, with uh, programming that's cool. yeah 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 so what what we saw at least so to show you i would like to start a bit with explaining okay why why uh, did we develop this platform and how how did we come up with this idea and that was what we what we saw about let's say huh, automating your work as an engineer that's not new that's something that engineers have been doing for a lot of time and especially i think at this moment still in this in the industry Excel is, of course, uh, yeah, a tool which is used a lot by engineers uh, to automate uh, their work. And you could say that an Excel sheet is actually parametric design, right? You define mm -hmm. some input parameters, you automate some calculations, and then yeah, that sort of automation parametric uh, work. I would say that is a main tool for all engineers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but what you also see, it's, so it's quite easy to learn uh, Excel, but you also really have sort of limits in terms of how yeah, far can you get with this automation. And that's why you see um, yeah, a clear trend um, um, that, that because Excel has certain disadvantages, right? It's, it's difficult to use, for example, advanced algorithms, integrating multiple software packages, from mm -hmm. Excel, well, some people do it. We also did it in the beginning, but it's uh, quite, uh, yeah, 
quite quite troublesome. Uh, your data management is often uh, an issue. Uh, what it, yeah, I think quite a uh, backdrop from Excel is it's very hard to reuse components. You made this nice uh, formula and then you have to reuse it again somewhere and then you just, yeah, you can't really reuse it actually. And protecting your IP is also a problem, right? So you send around an mm -hmm. Excel sheet and there, there you go. Um, and the version and the version control, right? If yeah. Someone changes, so you don't know when, who, and <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. And then you also have both your data and log your logic stored, and then yeah, I think it's very hard to manage, and that's also something that we uh, that we saw. So what you saw, what you see, I think, uh, quite is a clear trend that these programming languages are becoming more and more uh, popular. For example, Python, of course, but also, yeah, let's say also uh, visual programming language, languages like uh, Grasshopper and uh, Dynamo are in there or C Sharp. Um, and what you see here is that, yeah, often had uh, the learning curve is a bit more, uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. a bit more of a challenge in the beginning, uh, but the potential it has is far higher. So what we saw also when we started to do more automation with Python is that, uh, um, it, it clearly has some benefits. So for example, you can really nicely use advanced algorithms. You have this really big ecosystem in Python of open source packages. Um, it integrates really well with other software. More and more software packages have Python APIs. So you can really talk to it easily. Um, you can reuse components in a really nice way. However, yeah, if you have developed something in Python and you have a colleague who doesn't know any Python, yeah, it's mm -hmm. very, yeah, you can just send around the script, but um, yeah, people cannot uh, easily use it, and still you don't solve the data management and the protection of IP. Um, yeah, so at that point we were thinking, okay, so we see this power of Python, um, but yeah, it, it's very important in our opinion that you could make and and that you could also distribute this as a tool to uh, other people. So to come up with this, with these, let's say these disadvantages, we thought, okay, it would be great if you could um, make a user interface uh, via a web app available so that also people uh, without any Python knowledge are able to use this uh, tool easily. Also that you have a database behind an app so that you can also store your data and that you don't have the problem of uh, when you are working on an engineering project, you have a lot of data. Uh, that you want to uh, store this in the database, ideally, and that you can also run all the code in a secure environment mm. so that you can choose not to leak your IP. Uh, uh, we have a question quickly. Uh, why data management is poor in Python? Yeah, well, I think, let's say what I'm, what I'm mostly mean with that the data management is poor, it's in the sense that it doesn't, uh, let's say Python doesn't solve that out of the box. So, of course, with Python, you can work really well with a lot of data and it's really nice for data processing, but it's not an, it doesn't solve that you should store the data in some way. So that's still something that you, that you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I mean in main with the data management. That's more the storage of the data. So what you often see with Python, if you do something, yeah, you can run, for example, do something with uh, CSVs where you have your data stored, uh, but also, or you connect it to some kind of database, but it, it's not solved out of the box by Python, uh, yeah. the data management part. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that answers uh, the question. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, it's okay. It's Python is great for management, not for storing, right? Yeah, indeed. Um, okay, so basically you just, we thought, okay, you should be able to build a web app, but then uh, you have this typical engineer like myself. Uh, so just someone who, who is an engineer by background, knows, knows, knows some programming, for example, Python. And then if you want to create a web app, then you notice, okay, there's this whole ecosystem of things that I need to learn to be able to uh, develop a web app on front-end development, back-end development, infrastructure, etc. Uh, while, yeah, I don't have any knowledge on that. I just know how to... Uh, uh, program a bit. Uh, come um, on, uh, come on, Stein. Uh, just re reality check. You you cannot call your like a typical engineer when you can well, program. <laughs> well, now actually that is quite true because last years I I haven't been programming that much. So actually, okay. actually, my let's say okay, I can program in Python, of course, uh, and my skills have been improved. 
but don't ask me to uh, to develop a front end or those kind of things. I, I really don't mm-hmm. know how to how to do that. So I'm really happy that we have people in the company who know who know that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, of course, during the years, my my software development skills uh, uh, improved. Yeah, but um, the web web development is the, another pair of shoes, right? Is uh, yeah. another word. Indeed, indeed. Um, so then we thought, okay. How cool would it be if we would make it possible uh, that you could just purely based on Python that you could develop web apps uh, and really focused on those uh, those engineers and that we basically take away all the, let's say, web development uh, stuff and make that easy. Well, that wasn't there yet at the moment. So then we decided, okay, let's, uh, let build, let's uh, build this. So we started to develop this. Uh, into yeah our product so the core of our product is really a low code platform uh, with which we empower engineers to build and share and that's a very important thing uh, user friendly uh, web applications uh, and that you can do this with nothing but python um, and I think, yeah, I think it's good to mention that our, our platform consists of three main pillars. So one thing is the uh, SDK, so that stands for the software mm-hmm. software development kit. And basically, what that is, you could see it as just a Python package, with which uh, on the yeah on the background eh, you have all these uh, all these uh, technologies. But our software development kit purely works in uh, in Python, uh, and based on that, you can develop the web app. I will show later on how this actually works, so then I think it will become a lot more clear. Yeah, so, um, so you need to know, you, you have to know just the Python, right? To develop yeah. the web app application. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. So you can define the whole interface or the input parameters, output that you can all define just based on Python. Mm-hmm. Then another very important aspect um, of our platform, that's the integrations. Because hey, what you see a lot and what I think everybody uh, here knows is that hey, you have a lot of software that's being used uh, in the mm-hmm. industry for analysis or for for modeling or those kind of things. And um, we, uh, yeah, uh, so we don't, we don't think that we, it should be replaced or that let's say you have a really good finite element package to do calculations. Uh, We think it's far better to integrate with it instead of sort of replacing it or using something for that. So what we developed in a platform is that we make it, yeah, as easy as possible basically to integrate with these external software packages as we uh, call it yeah i see that you have revit dynamo rhino grasshopper ci engineering so yeah, yeah. all the good stuff that engineers love <laughs> yeah yeah um, that's actually throughout the years of course we have been developing this uh, based also on what we see what you use the, at, uh, at customers um yeah so what about, so we're... What, what about sophistic and uh, csi and uh, we have some question from paris oh yeah yeah yeah, so that's uh, that's a good question. Yeah, so basically uh, we have apps where we uh, integrate with uh, uh, Sophistic uh, as well. I think with CSI, I guess you mainly mean ETAPS, for example. Um, but what we have is we basically have also just a generic way of integrating with uh, software packages. And with that, let's say as long as you is there, if there's an automated way uh, to uh, communicate with a software package. And then uh, you can use that generic integration uh, to do that. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bentley? Hi. Any Bentley that's software? A, yeah, yeah definitely. All, the, all the users. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's always when you show some logos, of course, some yeah, yes, but, yeah. uh, but But definitely with Bentley software. So, for example, with, uh, uh, for example, Open Roads or uh, mm-hmm. Open Grounds. Um, um, it's possible to integrate off with uh, Pluxis, for example, which is also in the uh, in the um, suite of Bentley. Mm-hmm. Generative components for Bentley, I see. Yeah, I don't know that one actually. Uh, actually, it one. was the first. Actually, actually, that was the first parametric tool that was created, yeah. generative components. But I'm not sure if there are many people are using. Uh, I know that many people change from generative components to Grasshopper, and never, yeah. never in the different way, opposite. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. People Tecla structures. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. 
yeah, we have a really nice case also now with Tecla via Grasshopper uh, as an integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh. and and it's a funny question, integration with Costa for greenhouses. Yeah, that, so that's one we have already for quite a lot of time a customer in the, um, in the greenhouse industry. And mm -hmm. that one is indeed also using Costa. Okay. That's yeah. uh, really niche, uh, niche software. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's super niche. Yeah, it's super niche. Uh. Really popular in the Netherlands with all the greenhouses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. No, that, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So maybe um, just to continue. Um, yeah. So then the third pillar uh, is really the platform. So that's about that um, what we offer is an environment and it's, uh, yeah and secure environment that you can manage by yourself as an organization uh, in which you can share your apps internally with your colleagues so you can just create these uh, these apps you have this overview of all the all your applications and then you can add users give users certain rights to certain uh, um, uh, applications and there's just this whole also database behind it in which you can track uh, all the data that's stored behind the apps so that's another very important thing that let's say we want to make we make it as easy as possible to just deploy your app and make it available mm -hmm. you can just invite colleagues and go from there um, all right yeah yeah so to summarize the software development kit integrations and the platform mm -hmm. yeah and then i think now we come into the nice uh, part so that's the use cases yeah? so we of course uh, i Chris think that Peter. everyone 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 was yeah. waiting for that part <laughs> yeah indeed um, for the for yes. the meat for the meat <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um basically uh, to give a bit of an introduction on use cases what the things that are being built on our platform it's it's very broad so some are very simple apps uh, let's for example which replaces an excel sheet uh, just yeah, quite simple logic until very yeah complex cases in which you have integrations with uh, multiple software packages um yeah and just a lot of data and a lot of uh, uh, analysis for example and results being done um and what i would like to show you is a bit of an overview of also around yeah i brought this uh, uh range so i have yeah prepared four cases uh, that i would like to uh, show and basically it starts with simple towards uh more complex um and um yeah maybe I will even, just... even maybe maybe even five not four. Oh, sorry five yeah yeah you're right <laughs> i think i i think i added one uh yeah so yeah, there's uh, <laughs> yeah so there are there are five cases um and uh yeah so i will i will just uh show it so i will partly just show uh, show actually some apps uh, online and of a few mm -hmm. i have some uh, um, uh, slides. So, yeah, so to show you first, um, I think what's also nice to mention is that we have a free version of our platform, and with that, you can uh, just also publicly uh, publish apps uh, for free. Uh, and as you can see on our website, we have this nice app gallery, and we have more and more people who actually develop apps and put them in uh, the apps uh, gallery. Um, but and I think this, but this is just an optional way, right? You don't yeah. have to, yeah. You don't have to no. public, publicly, publicly show your work, right? No, indeed, no, definitely not. So that's a very good point. Yeah. So we have basically what I, yeah, explained before, yeah, where you have your secure environment in which you only share it with the people you want to share it with, and we mm -hmm. also have the have the possibility to show it publicly. Yeah, yeah. So both these options are mm -hmm. are available. Um, yeah, and I think this is a really nice app. It's quite, let's say. Uh, uh, a very yeah a nice app uh, which uh, is for structural engineers with which you can do this section uh, reinforcement uh, uh, analysis so this has been developed um, uh, by someone uh, yeah who's into this uh, the structural engineering and what's i think really nice to see is that you can just uh, change uh, um, uh, some parameters and then you get all these uh, results so behind this there's um, uh, Python logic in this case, with which all this, uh, yeah, all these typical things. I think every structural engineer does this, mm -hmm. uh, right? When you're into concrete, at least, uh, where you have to uh, design uh, your concrete reinforced section based on based on this. That, that's fu funny that you are showing this example because, yeah, uh, I work in the concrete company as well, and we have yeah 
quite similar Excel spread, which was like yeah, like enormous. It was like so huge yeah. and so complicated. But I can yeah. see like visually, can you can make a really good graphs, not the graphs that you yeah. make in Excel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed. So this is typically, I think, um, a typical case of indeed a replacement for an Excel sheet, for example. Uh, but I think with the advantage that it's far, yeah, it's easier to manage, right? You don't have to send around the Excel sheets when you have an update of mm -hmm. the Excel sheet that, that you sort of send it around. Hey, hey, everybody, this is the new latest version, but you can just put it in mm -hmm. this web app um, and make it. And also make sure that people not accidentally, for example, uh, 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 delete some formulas. It's just, um, yeah, a more robust way, basically, to do this. Mm -hmm. um, quite simple. Uh, and then I think another one uh, to show. So that's uh, that's with an integration. So quite actually a simple app, but with an integration in uh, in, uh, in Grasshopper. Um, so what you see in this app. So this is what you see here is we have some input parameters, um, and then um, uh, as an output, this is basically generated in Grasshopper. So all the logic. And so actually the Victor app. It has very little logic. It's just the input parameters. It's sent to the Grasshopper script. And then some calculations are being, uh, so the 3D model is generated and some uh, some parameters are being calculated, like the floor, floor area exactly, like, and, and those kind of things. And in this case, it also uses a, a plugin, uh, the Ladybug plugin, with which you can do this uh, solar analysis. Uh, and yeah. now you can see, yeah, Chris, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as uh, as far as I remember, uh, Ladybug is only one of the plugins in Grasshopper that was written in Python. So yeah. I, ca I can I can imagine that you start with this uh, application first because Python speaks with Python. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And actually, we set it up in such a way that you can use uh, any uh, any plugins. Uh, uh, you want so you can actually also connect this app to your own local uh, laptop, or you can also uh, run it uh, uh, run it in the, in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so this is just also and also quite a simple app in in that sense, right? There's one integration, and it's just. But the nice thing, of course, is is that yeah, with this, uh, people also you don't have to even have uh, Rhino or Grasshopper installed on your machine. Mm -hmm. You can just mm -hmm. share it via the web app. Yeah, because uh, yeah, everything in the ba backend is a uh, it's a grasshopper, but it's going yeah. through. But it, it have to be like converted in somehow uh, yeah. through Python to some Victor yeah. rules, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So what's quite nice if you're interested in this code, uh, you can actually when you click through the links, uh, we also just share the the Victor code of this and actually also this uh, grasshopper model. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, what we so basically, it's just quite easy to connect the input parameters to the input parameters on uh, in the Grasshopper. So we use the uh, hops components uh, for that, mm -hmm. and um, for the uh, what we send back. So what we support in Victor is the 3DM file format. So you can just send the uh, the native uh, Rhino uh, 3DM files back. And those can be directly visualized in the in the interface. So for that reason, yeah, the Python uh, logic is uh, very uh, small. Actually, it was a question from Alexandra. Is it possible to upload your own project? And you just answered that it's possible to upload a 3DM file, for example. Yeah. So it's indeed. Uh, so what we basically what what's indeed possible is with this app. So in this case, you cannot sort of change your Grasshopper model. Uh, but if you uh, yeah look at the the app code, uh, then you can just indeed adapt it with your own project, where you use your own gloss uh, file with other input parameters and other output. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you are familiar with LBT tools. Uh, Ale Alessandro is a LBT uh, LBT tools user. Maybe through your app, that would be quicker. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with LBT. Yeah, me neither. I, me neither. Okay, okay. That's uh, that's not a problem. Maybe Alessandro can write more about uh, about uh, this one. Yeah, like people yeah. Uh, ask about: um, Is it free to upload? What version is free to upload your project? Uh, because you have two separate uh, yeah. uh, versions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. 
what's basically uh, what what's free in our product is if you you can just use it for as a single user um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah and for development etc uh, that's free and you can uh, when you uh, deploy apps publicly that's also for free however when you have your own secure environment in which you want to invite colleagues etc that's basically a paid uh, uh, let's say uh, tier of our product so that's how our Mm -hmm. works. That's yeah. that's fair. That's fair enough. I like it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. LVT, LVT is lady uh, lady back tools. <laughs> ah, yeah. So uh, I think that's oh yeah. Yeah. So I think that's indeed uh, behind this. We also use uh, ladybug. So I'm not sure if there's a difference between ladybug and ladybug tools. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but indeed you can yeah use these kind of plugins uh, uh, as well. Yeah, so I, I can imagine like every type of script that you have it because you said that it's you are using hops, and yeah. for those who are not familiar, so you can send uh, all the data uh, to the server through the hops uh, hops plugins. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. um, all right. Yeah. Then I I would like to um, continue with, I think this is also a very nice case. So we're now going into a bit of a more uh, complex um, uh, uh, cases. Uh, so what we, uh, um, yeah, so, so the, the, the use case in this case, it's the, the, for the design of the foundation of a crane. Uh, so this has been developed by uh, Vanchy, which is a really big uh, French uh, construction company. They also have their own uh, engineering um, uh, department. And what they have developed uh, is an app uh, to automate these uh, crane foundations. And actually, it's not that much of a complex structure here. It's just a plate with uh, some piles behind it. But actually, if you look at the, the steps that you take to design this, that there's still quite a lot of things. And I think that's very typical for these engineering things. So they have to do basically some geotechnical analysis uh, to determine, okay, how long should the piles uh, be? And is everything stable enough? Uh, then they need to do, um, they use a finite element analysis to calculate uh, uh, the structural behavior. Um, then they do reinforcement checks to determine the reinforcement. Uh, and then, of course, a very important part is um, yeah, that they uh, should come up with uh, drawings and uh, reports. Um, and this whole process of this uh, uh, for this crane uh, foundation is in one single app. Uh, completely uh, integrated and uh, and automated. Um, and what they have reached with this, I think that's really nice to see, is that they uh, they were able, so usually it took them about three to five days uh, to design, uh, to engineer and do the design of such a foundation. And they were able to do it, to speed it up to 15 uh, minutes only, and because mm -hmm. that's all integrated. Um, and yeah, and so they do uh, around 225, they design these foundations for around 225 cranes per year. Um, so for them, this just saves them a huge amount of, uh, of uh, time and, uh, and effort. Yeah, I can imagine that this kind of foundation for cranes, they are kind of similar structure, yeah. but of course you have different uh, geotechnical uh, yeah. conditions. And I can imagine that it will take three days because, okay, it needs to take one from someone who is calculating to someone maybe for geotechnical to approval, maybe yeah. back and forth and going yeah. with, for the detailer with the reinforcement. So yeah. And if it's everything yeah. in one app, so it was like, I'm really looking forward to see how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So that's indeed a very good point that you, that you stress Chris. So the back and forth, that's of, of course, something very typical. Mm -hmm. It's never in one time it's completely uh, right. Right. So you always, mm -hmm have, okay, maybe we should change this. And then you have just sending files around uh, between different uh, people. Yeah. So I will just show this movie. I will skip through the movie a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. you can watch it after the session. Uh, of course, the complete version. It's just available uh, on a website. Uh, but this is how this uh, interface uh, looks like. Uh, so what you can already see here is that it's yeah, more extensive than uh, what you just saw. So as you can see in our product, you can also make these steps and then you can have far more uh, input parameters and, um, uh, and visualizations. Now, what you see over here is that basically you can give in all the, so it's it's in French actually, so that's possible as well. You know, maybe not possible mm -hmm. for everybody to read, but I think it's it's clear, right? So you can 
have all your geom ge geometrical uh, parameters and then based on that they made this nice visualization of the geometry but also in combination with the uh, geotechnical soil layout so that's also all input so you can just define okay what kind of soil materials do i have and what's the what are those uh, properties um yeah and then based on that uh they uh yeah can do all these uh, all these calculations so they connect it in this case with uh, a finite element package uh, with uh, sia uh, and they just run it and then they get the results back and then they all have this in in one app so yeah, so really the engineer just goes through all these steps fills in all the inputs mm -hmm. runs all the analysis and immediately you can see okay is my structure strong enough uh, is my reinforcement strong enough uh, are the piles long enough for all the geotechnical uh, uh, things and then uh, and I, th I think this is also, let's say, if you talk about the work that is often, I think, not the most joyful, uh, that's in this case, it's all the drawings are generated mm -hmm. automatically as well. Um, um, they also uh, completely made the reinforcement in, uh, in 3D uh, parametric uh, as well. So I think they just have an export towards, um, uh, I'm not sure actually, uh, if it's actually already just a bending file or that it first goes to, I can imagine that they first go uh, to uh, some 3D uh, package, maybe it's mm -hmm. Tecla. Uh, and then the reporting, and I think that's also uh, super nice to see, is that they just have automatically, they generate this report, and this is actually just a report with all uh, the different uh, calculations in there. So uh yeah as you can see they just automatically also put in uh, figures from the um from the finite element analysis but mm -hmm. also all the soil analysis everything is just in one report and because you have all this data and all this logic in one app you can automatically generate this report so this also means let's say one thing changes uh, you just can yeah automatically generate the report uh, again I really, I really love it. Uh, so actually you're going through every single step. So you're defining your parameters of the soil, the size of the foundation, the loads from the crane, which is for every particular case different. And at the end you can get everything. Uh, I really, I really love it. Uh, yeah. That, yeah, that also integrates with the, you say the SIA uh, for, yeah. for finite element. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Cool. cool. Uh, what about uh, data proce processing? Uh, it's a question from Ahmed. For example, in this case, is this yeah. on the Victor server uh, or where is this all the, because like Ahmed is in the case uh, where internet drop in the middle of calculations, what's, oh, yeah. what's happening? Yeah, so so basically how this works indeed that let's say all the uh, the input data, yeah, so all the data that you, uh, that you uh, in the, uh, uh, in here, Basically, all that data is uh, on our servers, indeed. Um, and if you then, but uh, the calculations are running on their own servers. So they basically, because they also use their own licenses. So they mm -hmm. have, for example, the CR models are running on their server. And we have a yeah, solution that you can easily connect that. Um, and indeed, yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, it's a web application. So that means that you need internet uh, for it uh, to uh, to able to uh, to work. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, we have some queuing systems here. So if your internet drops for a second, that of course, it just waits until it's back and then you get the results mm -hmm. back. Um, yeah, but at the end, it's a web application. So you do need internet uh, to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. We have first comment from Michael. This is awesome. And I would like to say yeah. that this is awesome. This is actually what industry is waiting for. And yeah, as you, as you first said, and uh, at we need to have three, five days. And yeah, yeah and definitely it, we can reduce the delivering, uh, delivering time. Yeah, great. Yeah, so I'm and, and actually what I'm actually most proud of is that this app has been developed by a structural engineer, which when he started this project had, let's say, very very limited python knowledge when he started mm -hmm. it and then of course in the beginning we helped him a bit eh, with uh, with uh, learning python a bit but he was able to create this app uh, while having a, yeah starting with very limited python knowledge so i think that's uh, you don't have to be a software developer uh, to be able to uh, uh, to yeah. develop this and i think that's that's really um, yeah the thing that we want to achieve uh, do you do you have any idea uh, how long it was developed this app? Uh, question from Julian. 
Yeah, I think they developed it in a few steps. So I'm not sure actually mm -hmm. how much time yeah. it, it took them. I know that that let's say uh, they did first did sort of a proof of concept in which they connected in a few weeks. They connected the main things, mm -hmm. uh, and that was done in in uh, in I think yeah, just like uh, two to three weeks. They had the first uh, version running, and then they yeah developed it further um, yeah to 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 make it uh, more extensive. Yeah, and like let's be honest it's not the rocket science like we are building a really easy app and yeah. of course if someone is starting with python so it will take time but i can imagine yeah. if you are going to build that in excel so it will yeah. take the same amount of hours <laughs> yeah yeah uh, uh, what about documentation uh, like you, you saw some video from the, it was the uh, end report it was done a word template or yeah. it was uh, done and uh, some add-ons yeah, so indeed, we also have um, uh, one thing that we have in our platform. It's a way that you can uh, um, basically easily generate Word documents. So you can create a template in Word. So you can just do that also in your whole, whole, your, your own house uh, style, um, uh, your own theme. And then you can easily, from Python, put all kind of data and all kind of pictures in uh, the Word uh, document. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can either uh, download it as a Word document, but also we have a tool, for example, that you can automatically then convert the Word document to a PDF so that you could also download a PDF. Yeah. So also you can download Word document and you can make some changes there as well, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, let's see how can I get out of this? There we go. Yeah, so this one, so we also have a nice uh, movie on that one on our uh, website. So, uh, but yeah, I think uh, due to time, I will, I will just go through this really quickly. But um, just to show you a bit also that it's used for quite different things. So what has been developed by this company, Architera, they're quite a small uh, 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 company of architects. And they have developed this application, uh, Victor app, in which you can uh, design uh, a parking lot. And they have basically all the heavy logic is in Dynamo. So they had already this Dynamo script with which they can automatically generate this optimal uh, parking uh, reinforcement or a sort of reinforcement parking uh, 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 layout. Mm -hmm. um, and the app, so what you can do in the, so you see here the interface of the Victor app. So the user can just easily draw uh, an area uh, on the map. Uh, then you can say, okay, there's a building over here or there's a road over here. And then based on that input, they run the Dynamo model uh, and they optimize the parking uh, spots. And then that's visualized again in the interface. Uh, and then they can download also all kinds of outputs that you can, for example, um, uh, load it into uh, Rhino or into Revit, and then uh, continue from there. Uh, so, the, so the map, so you can just, it's taking the map for the whole world. So you can just zoom it to your place and just yeah, yeah. visually point it in Victor? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So we also have sort of out of the box tools for this that you have a map view and that you can just click on the map and draw mm -hmm. lines and polygons and those kind of things. Uh, uh, so that's this is, uh, a, this is a really cool thing when you have like this out of box tools that you can yeah. you, do, you don't you don't have to like create a reinvent the wheel again. So just yeah. use the app that someone has created already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and we also have a lot of, let's say, open source things available, uh, sample apps and those kind of things. So, mm -hmm. so this is really quite easy to, uh, to set up. Um, all right. And then I think the final one, uh, which uh, I can imagine that people are interested uh, in. Um, so this is a um, uh, uh, yeah, use case, uh, really, let's say, an extensive uh, application, but also used for a really big project. Um, so it's for the design of the longest immersed uh, tunnel in the world. So uh, it's the Feynmanbelt link. So this is a new uh, uh, project. So it's a tunnel between Denmark and uh, Germany. Um, and it's at this moment. So you can see it here and uh, it's just a small blue uh, line. So at this moment, basically uh, where the blue line is, there's a, a ferry. Um, and as you can see, uh, so this is quite sort of the logical way if you want to go to Copenhagen or to Stockholm or uh, mm -hmm. from uh, then at this moment via road, you have to go via the 
yeah. I, I, I know that because I took this uh, road several times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, I wish to have this tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So that's why they are building it. And it's it's so it's both for cars and for, uh, for train traffic. Mm -hmm. um, I will also show, there's a really nice video uh, on YouTube uh, about this uh, project, so I'll also share that afterwards so uh, people who are interested can, uh, can watch this. Um, and actually the tunnel is um, 18 uh, kilometers long and consists of uh, 97 elements uh, of 217 meters long. So this is yeah, just yeah, really, really big uh, things. So they, they are building actually a factory on the, on the Denmark side to build all these uh, these elements, and then they uh, basically uh, uh, they uh, they they pull them towards the the site and they uh, uh, let them down into the trench. So that's that's the immersed part, uh, right? So that's how they how they build it. Okay. Is it a, a, how how long is it in total? Eighteen uh, kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I had to give a bit of an um, idea. Um, it's about the sort of the size and the amount of material. Uh, so they, for the reinforcement that is used, so it's a concrete uh, tunnel, but the steel reinforcement, it has the amount of 50 Eiffel Towers of uh, reinforcement uh, steel. Mm -hmm. um, and has, so now it's about one hour by boat, and then that will be 10 minutes by car, seven minutes uh, by train. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's really, a, a, it will yeah be a game changer, of course, for the sort of, the, the connection with the Nordics and also transport of uh, of goods and cars, etc. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's like one hour is just about uh, traveling, but also yeah. you need to check in and be before and everything. So yeah, and wait until you are going out from the ferry. So I think it will reduce even more. Yeah, yeah, indeed, yeah. Yeah, so what are we actually doing or uh, what is COE actually doing? Because COE, so it's a, it's a customer of ours. It's a big uh, engineering uh, um, company based in uh, Denmark and Sweden mainly, but actually all over the world as well. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, this tunnel consists of 97 tunnel elements, and but each element has different loads and soil conditions. So the geotechnical profile, that's actually the reason why they're making a, a submerged tunnel and that that's actually the reason why it took so long before yeah, they started building mm -hmm. this, is that the geotechnical profile is very challenging. It's very soft soil and it changes a lot, as you can see here. Um, so this means that you cannot, yeah, you really have to analyze and design all these different uh, elements uh, separately. And as yeah, explained, if you look at the amount of uh, steel yeah, you don't want to say, okay, we just take the one with the worst loads and then mm -hmm, apply that mm -hmm. amount of reinforcement to all the elements because then, yeah, yeah the, you can save a lot when you can optimize the steel reinforcement for each uh, element uh, separately. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do this, uh, the goal is that to uh, yeah, really automate, and it's mainly the structural engineering design uh, part, partly also geotechnical design, uh, that to fully automate uh, this, uh, this process. Uh, and a very important factor in this uh, project, of course, is to make deadlines. It's just, uh, yeah, if, if you have delays and also the, the engineering part is on the critical part of such a project. So it's, of course, very important that, uh, that they can deliver the designs uh, in time. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Uh, I, uh, can you also share with a question from Ananda? Uh, can you also uh, send uh, these apps for clients or make? Uh, apps for clients yeah. yeah i think that's that's an interesting question yeah definitely definitely so um what we also have quite some use cases where uh, companies are are building apps and then they uh, have for example uh, also again customers who use those uh, those apps uh, so sometimes it's used for sort of client portals uh, but sometimes it's also really that people just let's say they sort of build a software as a service uh, uh, company on our uh, platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's indeed a very interesting use cases as well. And and for example, what the Architera, the parking spots, that's actually what they do. They are planning to make this app. Uh, basically, uh, they have a version which is freely available, and they have a commercial ver version which mm -hmm. is then also available uh, for commercial uh, use. Yeah. Cool. Uh, great. Uh, great example. Uh, I, yeah. 
I really want to maybe see more. Yeah, you have more. Yeah, yeah just yeah. So that's one one last uh, uh, slide. Uh, so so how this is done is basically by integrating as well. So you could in some way compare it a bit to the to Crane Foundation, but then a lot more extensive, a lot more data. Mm -hmm. There's also a whole hierarchy in the Victor app. Um, uh, so that's also good to know that you can yeah we set it up in such a way that you can store all kinds of data and for multiple elements. Uh, and in this case, a connection is made with a robot for the structural analysis. And it really, yeah, so it runs actually, uh, they have already uh, uh, close to uh, 10,000 unique FAM models and they are only, yeah, uh, not even uh, at a quarter of all the analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. So basically had this whole process, automating or generating all these models, processing all the data, visualizing it, generating the reports, doing the reinforcement checks. Um, yeah, so I think this is a yeah a project we are really proud of actually. Well, Kobe developed it themselves mainly. Again, here huh, the uh, the engineers are developing these uh, uh, have been developing these applications uh, themselves. Um, yeah. So there are not software. So there, so there are not software developers who are sitting no. and yeah uh, no. building that one. Indeed. No, I, I think it's good to say here. Huh, so this is of course quite a very extensive app, and you see that these. These these people who are developing this are they are engineers, but they have uh, quite uh, very yeah extensive Python knowledge to be able to uh, to develop mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, yeah, okay. really great example. I, I I would love to see maybe more videos about this project, but I can yeah. imagine that Covid don't want to share everything In, uh, everything indeed. with you. <laughs> indeed. Yeah, but yeah, so maybe there will is, be some. Hmm? Yeah. So so my question is maybe Chris, do we because um, yeah, as I already explained, uh, the apps are developed by engineers, mm -hmm. um, and I I don't know if we have time for that. Maybe we can see, or that we that you want to dive into the question. But I could very quickly show okay how does this Python programming work uh, with uh, the app. So I don't know what you think about. Uh, let's see yeah, now. yeah, sure. We have some uh, some question, but I think that one of the question uh, it will be people would like to see how it can be integrated. So yeah, so yeah. let's jump into it. Okay. All right, so uh, yeah, so did we immediately dive into uh, uh, just show you first. So I will really show just the simple basics uh, at first. So I think I think that helps a lot. So here you can see this is a demo environment that we're working in, and I have my own development environment uh, here. And what you can see here, I have this very simple app. Eh? So you see the basic, uh, the same layout. I have this just this uh, uh, this three D view uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, beam, and I have mm -hmm. two parameters in this case uh, with which I can change uh, the width and the uh, and the and the height. Mm -hmm. um, people might wonder where's the third one. Um, yeah, so what you see over here, so this is basically the Python code here that I have on the right side. So at this moment, when I'm developing, I just have this code locally running uh, on my machine. And um, uh, you can see this is basically all the Python code for this app that you see here. So you see here the parameterization. I have just two parameters, and width and height, and that's just a line of Python code. So if I would like to change or add another parameter, uh, I can just do that by uh, using uh, this number field. So we also have other types um, uh, fields uh, available. And if you now see, okay, you now see mm -hmm. that I added this, and then it also adds to the input parameters. So you can really, when you change something directly, you see what's happening. And now, if I change this parameter, actually, it's it's not magic. So nothing uh, happens yeah, yeah. Uh, yet. Uh, so you see here at the bottom part uh, where we generate the geometry view. Um, yeah, I, before the length was hard coded, but I can now co connect that to the parameter I just uh, uh, made. So in this case, it's mm -hmm. uh, the length. If I now uh, save this, then it should work. Let's see. So every calculation now is uh, going locally, right? Here in this case. Yeah. Yeah, so in this case still, when I'm in development mode, so to say, um, basically the platform is online, but it's connected to my local uh, uh, code. And then when you are 
let's say uh, when you think okay now i'm ready to publish then you run a command you say uh, publish and then it's uh, then this code is running in uh, the cloud mm -hmm. cool uh yeah. the, uh, always cool to see the live uh, live demo and yeah. see how it's not the it's not the magic right no no and then and so one thing is so just really quickly just to s show it so Let's say that uh, if I would like to add a map view, as we just saw, so this is our mm -hmm. documentation. Here you can see how everything uh, uh, works. Uh, so now you see that I need to import a few more uh, elements to be able to use this map view. And then I can just copy this uh, the basic mm -hmm. code. Uh, I add it here. And now if I refresh, and that's always tricky, of course, if I didn't do anything uh, uh, wrong here. And I'll refresh. Right. So, yeah. so, you, so you're showing that you can just use this out of box. Yeah, like yeah. the map view. Cool. Yeah, now you see, hey, there's a map as well. So so just to, <laughs> to give a bit of information. I, I love it. I love it. This example is uh, triangles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bermud. Bermud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So just to show you quickly how this uh, how this works. So hopefully everybody has a bit of an understanding. Okay, how does mm -hmm. this actually work, and how can you develop these uh, these kind of apps? Cool. Uh, let's go to answer some of the questions. Thank you for this presentation. Uh, actually, lots of uh, lots of comment. Nice presentation. Thanks. Uh, just a small announcement that in two weeks uh, I'm starting the new program, programming in architecture, engineering, construction, programming in AEC. And I'm also glad to say that uh, one of the lessons, it will be also Victor lesson, because one of the trainings, it will be about Python. And we are going to collaborate. And yeah, there will be also a chance to learn how to build your own app uh, with the basic Python um, uh, skills. So I'm really looking forward to that one for everyone who is interested. So here, programming in AEC.com can register for the waiting uh, for the waiting list. And yeah, uh, let's go to some uh, uh, comments and let's say, uh, uh, maybe you know this uh, question from Bernard. Is it possible to connect to WMAS maps? I don't know what type of maps is it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah, so that has been done indeed. Uh, so it's sort of a map layer standard. Um, so we have quite nice Python packages to use uh, WMS maps. So that has been used in um, in, uh, in apps as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, have you made any apps that are um, B two C? Yeah, yeah. So that's indeed uh, very good. Yeah, that's aligned with what uh, what Ananda was uh, asking. So mm -hmm. it's indeed we have customers who build an app, uh, and then they actually have a B two C model on that uh, on that app. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, this example from Dynamo Parking uh, app uh, is oh. it available or is unavailable? Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. So it could. Yeah. So so it's not completely in our hands because it's been developed by by this Arcadera company. Um, so it should be in the apps gallery on our website. But if it's not online, um, yeah, then it might be that they are doing some uh, some work on uh, on it. Mm -hmm. uh, question from Piotr. Uh, thanks for great presentation. Uh, is there a way to customize the front end, uh, like the visual front? Yeah, so we have some customization uh, options there. So, for example, you can use also your own uh, theme and colors and your own logos. Um, uh, on the other end, it's not, let's say, you can't, uh, it's really a framework. So, you cannot go as far as you could when you really go HTML, CSS all the way. And so, there are some customization uh, options uh, definitely available, uh, but not as, uh, yeah, that you can. Uh, from every detail defined by yourself, mm -hmm. how it looks like. Yeah, uh, I see. Uh, this one actually, question from Scale uh, uh, about the licensing. Does yeah. the user need to have a license? For example, you saw that uh, connecting to finite elements or it's remotely accessing the authors. Uh, yeah. How it's solved? Yeah, so both is possible. The most used case is that actually the the software is running on the... Uh, so what we usually customers do is that their software is running on their own virtual machines. 
um, and um, that they connect it and then in that way also have access to their own licenses. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, so we are going quickly because there's lots of questions. Yeah. Uh, good, good presentation. Uh, OK, uh, once the Python code, uh, Grasshopper models, Dynamo are uploaded to Victor app, where lies the IPI uh, yeah. of the uploaded model? Is the IPI handed over to Victor? Yeah. No, so the IP is always, and that's, that's uh, I understand this question. So the intellectual property yeah, is always for the, the if you use it uh, yourself, it's still your intellectual uh, property. So all the code that you write on, on Victor, etc., that's all your intellectual property. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear that answer. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Rude, how is this to upload Grasshopper definition? I feel, uh, yeah. uh, this is uh, something new, right? Uh, yeah. the connection with Rhino. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's indeed not the, the case yet. Let's say it's not automatically you upload your file and it automatically generates the right parameters, etc., in the Victor app. So you should, let's say, as I just showed you how you can define parameters, um, you can uh, define the parameters and then you need to connect them basically uh, to your Grasshopper uh, parameters. So it needs a little bit of, uh, of coding. Mm -hmm. Uh, here, how to dwell deeper into Python and master the art of using the integrating AP to transform your designs into functional and user-friendly website. Where can I learn? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I will just remind uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> that's programming in architecture, engineering, construction. So we're taking users with the basic uh, skills and going with the practical uh, examples of, lear uh, of, uh, of learning. And as I said, uh, Victor is going to have lessons about building webs up uh, there uh, as well. So enough of advertising. <laughs> uh, <laughs> can we use the application for data visualization interface tool? Definitely. Yeah. So that's uh, that's something that ha that's used actually a lot um, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, for that case. So uh, the nice thing about Python, you have all kinds of nice packages, for example, Plotly to do data visualization. Mm -hmm. And we have, for example, also a Plotly view, so you can just easily uh, show Plotly in your uh, app. Uh, question, yeah. Uh, does Victor uh, code checks too? Um, and do, do you then mean the code checks? So for example, like structural engineering code checks, is that what you mean, Akash? Or, or maybe or maybe uh, Python, Python uh, or maybe pi Python code as a compiler yeah. or? Well, we don't. So what we often see is that uh, we support uh, that people are using unit tests and, and automated testing. Uh, so that's something that we uh, also describe in a documentation, how you can uh, set that up. But it's not, let's say, you can de decide for yourself uh, whether you want to do this uh, or not. Mm -hmm. uh, people are asking about the price of the Victor. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So go go yeah. go <laughs> you can just yeah. handle maybe two websites or yeah you can also promote here no no it's not a problem yeah so it's not so we don't have so still our pricing so it, you will see that it's not on a website uh, uh, publicly available and the reason for that is that it's still we have just a very wide range of s very small companies doing b2c very big companies mm -hmm. so for that reason it's still um yeah uh, we yeah it's a bit of tailor tailored uh, so that's why, uh, yeah, it r ranges from, uh, yeah, it starts with uh, like 100 euros per month until, uh, yeah, a lot, uh, depending on, uh, yeah, we also have uh, customers with uh, thousands of users. Yeah, and then you can imagine that it, that the price is different. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so fortunately, I cannot just give one uh, definite answer to that. But mm -hmm. if you contact us and you show me your case, then we can, yeah, very easily. Uh, yeah, give you an indication on that. How they how they should contact you? Well, that's yeah. Maybe you can share my screen for a second yes. again. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's I think if if you uh, if if anybody got enthusiastic. So first of all, uh, yeah, we just have this free version as I explained. Uh, so you can just find it on our website. Uh, also, uh, you can if you want to see more. We have all kinds of use cases, etc., on our website uh, as well. Uh, and yeah, if you have any questions, just feel free to contact me directly uh, as well. Of course, we also have general email addresses on the website, which we follow up. But if you have any uh, questions for me or yeah, you don't know where to go, just 
drop me an email and uh, I'll respond. Yeah, uh, we we have also, I think, CEO of the Global, uh, if I recognize it. And uh, he is saying that presentation was uh, great. And okay. actually, actually, lots of comment here. You can love your work, guys. Good job. So I, I, I think that people really love your presentation. Yeah, okay. uh, I don't know if you have still Very time to, to answer questions. I do, I do. Yeah, uh, I have also, so we can uh, stay for just a couple of minutes and answer all the questions. Can you possibly connect ETAPs? Uh, it's the first question. Yeah, yeah. So again, here, um, yeah, that's possible via the generic integration that we uh, that we have. It's indeed also possible to connect uh, ETAPs. Uh, what about Archicad? It... Oh, that's a good one. I don't, I don't think we did that yet. Um, so, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned before, if it has an API available, we can integrate with it. Uh, but I don't think that has been done already. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. might be that someone did it that I don't know, but yeah. Uh, Francesco, does Victor support Python uh, virtual environments? Yeah, it does. It does indeed. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, the webinar will be available to watch later if you registered on learnglasshopper.com uh, slash uh, webinar and Victor, so you can uh, find it. Uh, yes, and presentation, uh, it will be available after afterwards as well. Uh, let me think. Uh, Ahmed, thank you guys. Great work. Uh, yeah, it's a stain work, not mine. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I just asking a question. Uh, let me see. And I think uh, maybe Caramba plus Victor. This will be a good one. Uh, yeah, that's uh, possible too. Uh, so it's quite, quite, quite interesting actually. Someone uh, because we're also doing sort of exploring a collaboration with uh, Shape Diver uh, because they're really good in handling. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Uh, running a gross at scale in the cloud. Uh, and actually, Alex, uh, one of the founders of ShapeDriver, has made this uh, this uh, sample app where he connects it with uh, Caramba. So it's uh, definitely possible. I think this is a great news uh, for all Grasshopper users that Victor and ShapeDiver, they're going to collaborate, that they are not going to competing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're doing similar work, but actually different, <laughs> if I can say yeah. so. So it was great information when I also saw on stage Alex like talking about Victor and Shape Diver. So it's like, okay, this is a great, uh, a great stuff for our Grasshopper, uh, Grasshopper users. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I will not take more of your time. We think we have answered most of the questions. So again, uh, I'm really glad to that you accepted the invitation and hope to see you next time in maybe live on the another yeah. uh, Rhino World meeting or maybe in, uh, in Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. If you're in in, in the Netherlands, definitely uh, let uh, let us know. And thanks a lot, Chris, for this opportunity. And thanks everybody for being here. I really enjoyed uh, it. And uh, yeah, of course, you're speaking a lot, but you see it all the questions and the reactions that uh, that uh, that people are uh, yeah like it and are positive. So it's uh, yeah, very. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it was a pleasure for me. Thank you, and see you on the next one. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.